maybe, yes, great, thanks. <laughs> the automotive industry is changing. There are multiple levels of disruptions all happening at the same time. Usage patterns, like for example, ownership are changing towards a more shared approach. Cars with combustion engines are replaced by a lot of new electric car models. Autonomous vehicles are driving already on at least some streets. And consumers, customers are expecting that digital service within a vehicle work as convenient as they are used to from their mobile phones. These are a lot of challenges and a lot of challenges which all require changes in services, especially in the customer facing uh, services. They will be rebuilt, restructures, recreated, and they all have a very strong dependency on infrastructure, connectivity infrastructure, vehicle, car infrastructure, IT infrastructure, in the cloud. A lot of things, a lot of challenges are ahead of us. Welcome to our talk about software development in the automotive industry. My name is Matthias. I'm here joined by Daniel from Krebab. Hello. And we, are, we will explain how automotive software development looks like in the current times. Porsche itself is also in the midst of a transformation. It is... Um, um, there should actually be uh, things coming probably now. Let's do it. Um, Porsche is also in the midst of the transformation. It is transforming from a sports car manufacturers, which produces very beautiful cars, to a mobility provider. Mobility provider of exclusive and sportive mobility. And actually, that's a very big difference. Sports car manufacturers versus mobility provider. To create a um, very seamless integrated mobility solution, the cars need to be equipped with a lot of connected car services and also um, with a lot of connectivity and so on, which is very different than driving a 911 on, on a racetrack. So there are a, a lot of challenges. And of course, cloud is needed to solve these challenges. We, you are using nowadays the term automotive cloud, a term which was coined by our v, uh, Volkswagen Group colleagues, and how that looks like, this automotive cloud, and um, how we develop and um, deploy software using Cloud Foundry, and that comes into play, we will show um, and explain during the talk. But let me give you a little bit more of a context first. So what we are seeing is the trend that computing power is moving from data centers towards devices, small devices at, at the edge. Small devices like, for example, smart robots, which are orchestrated in a factory, which is an example from the industrial Internet of Things. Or another example would be a smart watch, which can already pre-process a lot of data before sending it out um, to the cloud at all. Edge computing is, for me, concerned with processing data at a location where the data is originated or where it is needed. But actually, there is not just one level of computing nodes and devices we see. Actually, there are multiple levels. And um, that is what fog computing adds to the de definition for me to edge computing. There are, is, of course, the computing power in the data center. But then there are also intelligent base stations, intelligent hardware, network hardware, intelligent gateways, and smart devices and sensors and actors. But this is just one trend we are seeing. Another th trend is within the vehicle itself. A lot is changing about the electronics architecture in the vehicle. Currently, we have a, um, an architecture called distributed electronics architecture, which is comprised of maybe 70, 80, 90, 
100 plus control units. And this, each of these control units with a very specific software version. And each of the control units have the need to communicate with each other. And a lot of them also have real time requirements. This is a very complex task to manage and system to manage for the uh, automotive uh, manufacturers. So the first idea is to combine and bundle functionality based on domains or maybe even cross domains on a few more powerful hardwares within the vehicle. And this just meaning bundling functionality from the existing ECUs and putting it on some more decent hardware. And even one more step forward is um, that we can think of a hybrid approach. In the future, critical software, of course, needs to be in the ve vehicle, safety relevant and uh, all the other critical um, software. But maybe there could be fun some functionality outside the vehicle, which could be on deployed on some edge components like base stations or even maybe in the cloud. To summarize, Porsche is transforming from a sports car manufacturer to a mobility provider. Computing power is moving more towards the edge and is now available there, in our case, at the vehicle. Also, in the vehicle, the electronics architecture is changing. This all com uh, combined with the need and expectation of customer to use digital services as convenient as they're used to, this creates the need to use a new approach, a different approach to create software, especially distributed software in component, uh, with components inside the vehicle and um, also on, on the cloud. F to summarize the expectation, I've created a small haiku. I, I call it the automotive edge or uh, um, also edge computing CF push haiku, which is of course based on, on this very famous CF push haiku, and it reads like this. Here's my source code. Run it on the edge and cloud. I do not care how. So my source code, of course, means software components which can run in the vehicle or also in the cloud. Edge and cloud shows the distributed nature of an automotive cloud. I do not care how, but of course it must be fast, reliable, and auditable, and secure, and so on. A lot of functional and non-functional requirements there. Just read it again. Here's my source code. Run it on the Edge and Cloud. I do not care how. To bring the automotive cloud and the idea of it really into existence, we started a few years back a small research project um, to, to actually um, try it out. And we wanted to see what things we need to cover to actually do it. And three validations point we defined. The first was a digital twin, which we wanted to embrace from the edge computing paradigm. The second one was a powerful license concept we were thinking of. And the third one was about what requirements are needed and should be posed on underlying platform to de develop future mobility service. Daniel, as you were with some colleagues from GrabUp in the project, um, in the research mm -hmm. project, how did we actually validate the digital twin concept? I guess first you should know what digital twin is. You may say it's a virtual model of a process, product, or a service, and also the bridge between the physical and digital world. In our solution, we've implemented a component called Vehicle Shadow, which was the services possible for communication, as well as state synchronization, of every single vehicle registered in the platform. Our design was based on a current and desired state idea. So the vehicle was reporting its current state to the platform. And on the other hand, platform was trying to update vehicle state to desired value. Because of that, we were able to build such corner cases as getting the correct vehicle state after it went offline and then back online. This phase successfully showed us that this pattern works very well for automotive use case. Yes, actually it worked out very well and we see later in the uh, short demo how we <coughs> integrated digital twin concept. Regarding licenses, we were thinking about a concept which supports a sophisticated sales concept. For example, 
a user could buy a service which is only valid for in a specific region or in a specific city or a service which is just available throughout a few months each year. Or it could be that a user buys a service and wants to use it in multiple cars. So how did that work out, this very generic license concept and complex license mm -hmm. concept? So just like you mentioned, we approached this idea uh, and decided to keep this design as generic as possible. Well, our implemented system uh, licensing uh, allowed us to fast and easy license creation using predefined constraints like geolocation or limited number of usages. And the, the ability of automatic synchronization between the car and the cloud ensured that policies are propagated in near real time. Right, right. As I was working before with Cloud Foundry, I wanted to bring over the developer experience and the ease to create these kind of services and applications also um, to this project. As we were using Cloud Foundry, what did we find out when using this for our project? Mm -hmm. So as you all know, when you use Cloud Foundry, you may focus on writing software. As underlying platform, we will do the rest for you. And furthermore, an even driven IoT solution requires to have resident platform underneath. The deployment to Cloud Foundry is extremely developer friendly because of CF push, right? And deployment of several decoupled microservices to the cloud was much easier than running them on my own machine. Also, cloud fund leverage from services provided via marketplace, for example, for data storage. Right, um, so how was the project set up? Maybe you can tell a little bit about that. Uh, we worked in small, agile, cross-functional team with one week iterations. We tackled each use case with brainstorming and architectural session and before we started coding, we had to consider every corner case. Let's take an example of remotely opening the doors. So when you want to open the doors remotely, you want to do it immediately or not at all, as some of the comments have specific time to leave. Yes, uh, with a very skilled team from Crayobab, we could easily validate these points. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the technical details of the project. So to develop such uh, complex solution, we needed to use several technologies. So the state synchronization was created on top of MQTT protocol and state storage using NoSQL MongoDB database. Our vehicle was mocked using Docker container and within that container, we had multiple microservices which were representing vehicle functionalities and they were based on Vivi protocol. Vivi is Volkswagen infotainment web interface and is worldwide web consortium standard on how to use REST within the infotainment. Additionally, we also implemented remote calls with plain REST and with the assumptions that future vehicles will be using IP version six. Right, there were a lot of assumptions we had to make um, for future um, vehicles, right? So what were, to summarize the, the major findings on that? This project showed us that Cloud Foundry as prototyping platform worked out very well, especially in terms of its services. And additionally, we saw that future of automotive industry needs to have a reliable IoT platform. Sadly, there was no platform available out of the box. Uh, here I would like to show you the result of the incubator project. So, in the right, right side, we may see CLI simulator running inside a vehicle. In this case, it's not real Porsche, but a Docker container running on Cloud Foundry. On the left side, we see a demo application showing current vehicle location, uh, where, which also is deployed to the Cloud Foundry. <laughs> Under that, we see a postman, which displays the current vehicle state from uh, Digital Twin. And under simulator, we see MQTT client listening to reading topics where you may notice updates coming from the vehicle. Our scenario is licensed based on geolocation, which is enabled only in area near Stuttgart. And you may see that license is enabled when the value is on. So let's go through our scenario. First, we are starting the simulator, loading the routes and picking one from Stuttgart to Frankfurt. For simplicity of demonstration, the route isn't following any road. 
And as you may notice, as the hill is moving away from Stuttgart, you will notice here that the value will change to off. And yeah, it is. And when our vehicle will be moving back to Stuttgart, it will be enabled again. Yeah. Right. With that impressive result using Digital Twin, implementing a sophisticated license concept, um, showed to the management we decided to continue the project into a prototyping phase and actually. Um, bringing it on some real hardware. This was all just simulated, as we just heard. So how was the project set up in, in that second phase? In this iteration, we have separate functional teams. First one, focus on vehicle software development, and second one, on code development. But this time, our project team was part of bigger agile release train, where every team prepared its own contribution to product increment, and together, we're creating a future of automotive industry. Working with so many teams on so many levels was an amazing experience for us developers. Yes, it was scaled up a lot. Can you tell us a little bit on what could be taken from the earlier incubator project? So as you may guess, Digital Twin. Once again, we paid a lot of attention to this pattern as it seems to be an ideal approach in IoT ecosystem. It's extensible, we're able to integrate with many vehicle subsystems without any changes. And additionally, on top of it, we implemented our own query language. Right, what, what does subscription mean here? Uh, so subscription here is a process of gathering big data where cloud is subscribing for the events coming from the vehicle. And based on those events, we may create new vehicle functionalities. Like for example, service which will help driver to avoid obstacles on the road. It's worth mentioning that inside vehicle there are dozens of VV microservices and because of our solution, service developers are able to subscribe to them transparently. Yes, were there any automotive implications on, um, on the project? Uh, so the development of technologies before automotive industry creates a great challenge in testing as an interesting question arises. How to test software running inside vehicle? I can give you a tip. Containerization is the key. In this phase, we were focused on real hardware applied to the vehicle. And from the start, we needed to have tested software to have stable version during integration window on target hardware. For that, we decided to deploy our car to the cloud and to have an automated end-to-end -end tests. And for that, we pick Kubernetes as our platform. Right, you just mentioned Kubernetes. So how did Cloud Foundry, Cloud Foundry Marketplace, and Kubernetes play together in our project? So our solution was utilizing Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes side by side, as both of them may be used for different use cases. For example, Cloud Foundry is a great application runtime and superior external services provider via Marketplace. And on the other hand, Kubernetes has native containers and persistent volume support. Also, one of our first requirements was to have containerized software for a vehicle, and because of that, it was much easier to create CI-CD pipelines with concourse on top of CloudFunder and Kubernetes. The Volkswagen CloudFunder installation was also very useful in terms of its services provided. We use, it, we use such services like RabbitMQ, MongoDB, or S3. Yes, right. Um, we could use a lot of services from the marketplace, that's right. Uh, one other point was very important and a core idea that our platform, the automotive cloud platform, uh, should be somehow independent from the underlying communication platform. And so can you tell us a little bit about the integration into different communication platforms We can differ from maybe each region? Mm -hmm. oh, of course. So yeah, that, that was one of the most challenging part to verify different communication platforms as they have different communication protocols, different requirements. And as a developer, I can say, we have met a, a, with a lot of obstacles on our journey to achieve one unified architecture for that. But in the end, we're able to provide one digital platform to rule them all. Here is an example of how we utilize our solution. 
On the left side, you may see a demo application which allows to check the current battery state of the car. And on the right side, you may see a diagram which shows how our unified architecture was applied. Here you may notice the same REST resources on a connector gateway and energy service lever. It's our unified API. And it's valid across all communication platforms without any changes in source code. Additionally, our solution provides seamless customer experience even if the car is in an underground garage. And on the other hand, we also help service developers with providing them fallback path by getting the last reading from vehicle shadow or by letting them update vehicle asynchronously. Our solution, the automotive cloud, consists of several layers. Starting from the right side, you may see cloud platform where service developers may add their new features and integrate them with vehicle. And for them, it's also seamless experience as service-to-service -service communication. Connector Gateway creates unified API uh, for communication with the vehicle. And all the details how to connect to the vehicle, what protocol to use, that's the responsibility of communication platform here. And the IoT device about which we're talking about here is our car. So here you may notice the IoT agent and the IoT gateway which communicate with each other. This implements the gateway and the agent paradigm in IoT world, which allows to have horizontally scalable solution up to millions of devices. You may notice here resource-based communication as well as agent-initiated communication based on messaging. Of course, digital twin is very important here because it helps us with vehicle state synchronization as well as simplifies feature integration by its abstraction and query language. Our solution is extensible. We may add new features to the cloud and they will be as well instantiated on vehicles board. And on the other hand, our solution is also extensible in terms of geographic area where we want to drive a car. If one communication platform is not available, we may use another one without any changes in the source code. On top of that, we decided to create CICD pipelines and test framework to ensure quality and reliability of our solution. In such challenging industry as automotive, it's very important to have end-to-end -end tests. And one that, what does end-to-end -end tests mean here? So I will show you an example. We have our test scenario, which will get the battery state, so it communicates with energy service. And then the service sends a request to our connector gateway, which is responsible for sending the request to the correct vehicle. And then agent inside the vehicle is sending the request to test instrumented, instrumented software, which is responsible for pushing the response for this request to our test storage, which is then validated for expected value. Because of that, we are able to deploy a car to the cloud and test it before installing the software on a real vehicle. Right. As we talked about the marketplace before and the services we are using, I just wanted to highlight uh, that in Cloud Foundry, we found it very elegant to use the services from the marketplace. And here in the marketplace, colleagues from Volkswagen, Porsche, and Audi contributed different kind of services ranging from database, storage services, legal services, as well as development tooling service. Mm -hmm. And one example um, in uh, Daniel will show now is about a continuous integration service. Yeah, so we have used Con Concord as a service from Volkswagen Marketplace. And here you may notice how we push the latest changes on board. So with every commit to the master branch, our concourse builds Docker image. And here it's worth mentioning that it may even use specialized Docker images which are able to run on electronic computing units inside a vehicle. And those images differ a lot from regular Alpine or Ubuntu image. Then our image is pushed to the registry and Pipeline is creating device in Microsoft Azure IoT. When device is registered, the IoT edge running on it runs the, pulls the latest image and runs it. Right, to, to summarize, we found in the project it very valuable to use Cloud Foundry, especially um, in terms of speed and reliability. 
Also, we found it very important um, to use the marketplace. This really showed the power of the ecosystem to use easily use external services in our solution. Especially in such uh, quickly developing industry as IT, uh, there is hard to choose which platform to pick. But the good news is that you don't need to pick just one, as Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes combined are superior, and they let us developers with way of thinking. Here is my source code, run it on the edge and cloud, I do not care how. And last but not least, for us developers, it's very important to focus on CI CD from the beginning, as the most valuable product is one running on client's device, in this case, in a car. Right, so that concludes our short talk about software development and deployment in the automotive industry using the approach of an automotive cloud. Thank you very much for your attention and don't forget, here's my source code, run it on the Agent Cloud. I do not care how. If there are any questions, just um, yeah, feel free. I think we have two minutes left. Thanks. So uh, MQTT protocol was only used in the first phase, which was incubator project, and our vehicle mo was mocked. So we never actually connected with real vehicle. So all the connection was made inside the crowdfunder, and we haven't seen any problems with latency. Right. In the second part of the project, we were using the um, Microsoft Azure um, abstraction, which also is using um, MQTT. Uh, the interesting cases in the automotive uh, world is more regarding the wake up of the system, right? When it actually gets online, when it needs to be, how always on can it be in the automotive world, um, which is interesting um, talks between electrical and combustion engine vehicles. It also differs and there are some trade-offs and risks and, uh, to, to make, right? How always on it can be. But after that, uh, latency turned out in our smaller test to be okay, I, I would say okay-ish. Um, and if it appeared, um, it, the, the network infrastructure is of course the most important factor of that, right? If it's um, 4G um, or what, what happened during the network infrastructure. And, and so of course the network infrastructure connectivity is some challenge we always, we always have, a at least until 5G is there, right? And then <laughs> all, is, all is good, right? Yeah, any other? Or? You can also approach us later. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you.